High heels have been a fashion staple for decades. From skinny stilettos to flashy platforms, heels have long been stars of the catwalk. Then the pandemic seemed to have killed them off for good, with sales falling by more than 60%. But some are still betting on them, like this factory in Brazil that has seen demand skyrocket. So is it too soon to cancel heels? Or can they rise once again? The story goes that Persian soldiers wore heels centuries ago. It started out as an equestrian tool to help secure the rider's foot in the stirrup. It allowed for the handling of heavier weaponry. And long before Carrie Bradshaw, there was Louis XIV. He made shoes with red heels popular more than 200 years before Louboutins were even a thing. One of the ways of showing that you had been to France and that you were aware of this fashion moment was to start wearing red heels. But men eventually abandoned the trend, and women picked it up. Marie Antoinette was famous for her heels. One of her shoes sold for about $50,000 at an auction. But just like the French queen, heels would eventually fall from grace. Once the French Revolution is over, the heel and these taints of um, corruption, one could argue, are thrown away. Heels came and went over the years, but they really saw their glory days in the 1920s. The music, jazz, the dance, the Charleston. Women got the right to vote. They went to college, and many of them joined the workforce. And as dresses got shorter, it was time for shoes to shine. But not everyone was happy about it. Lawmakers in several U.S. states tried to ban high heels. In places like Massachusetts, shoemakers argued it would hurt their business. In Texas, even cowboys would pay the price. This was around the time that cowboy boots were becoming popular thanks to Western movies. In the end, fashion prevailed, and there was no turning back for heels, which only got thinner and taller. World War II technology allowed for the extrusion of thin steel rods. And these became repurposed by shoemakers in order to now support the weight of a woman using the narrowest heel ever invented. These were called stilettos, the Italian word for sharp knife. One of the first to lead the trend was Roger Vivier. He became famous for designing the shoes Queen Elizabeth II wore to her coronation. Beauty, queenship, Raymond superb, her life outsoars the noblest fiction. And then there was Salvatore Ferragamo, a favorite of Marilyn Monroe. But men weren't quite out of the picture. The Beatles boots became popular in the 1960s. The heel, it's from Spanish flamenco dancers, is what inspired John Lennon, for example, to add a heel to his Chelsea boot. Drag queens also adopted high heels, even at a time when you could be arrested in the U.S. for dressing as the opposite sex. David Bowie and Elton John rocked platforms in the 70s. Then a designer called Manolo Blahnik stepped in. He actually couldn't stand that blocky look. So he took a risk in trying to reintroduce the heel in the 1970s. Princess Diana famously wore them with her revenge dress. And a cult following was born when Carrie Bradshaw warned Manolo's in Sex and the City. I need your honest opinion. You can't afford them? This is extraordinary the amount of people who watch these things. And they want to wear like Carrie wears or like Sarah Jessica Parker wears. At that time, Neiman Marcus reportedly sold around 30,000 pairs of Manolo's every year. And remember Louis XIV? Christian Louboutin launched his iconic red soles in the early 90s. About 20 years later, he was reportedly selling 700,000 pairs around the world. Moi, j'ai pas, j'ai pas œuvré à ce que les choses deviennent iconiques. Elles, elles le sont devenues de fait, et euh, à ma plus grande surprise. When Louboutin was becoming a success, we were like walking around in major like estilados. It was definitely a very glamorous moment in, in the fashion world. This is Marina Larude. She spent more than 10 years at Condé Nast and then became a fashion director at Barney's. You would only like wear the flats to and from the subway and then you would switch to your high heels, you know, at the office. Heels became a power tool for professional women. At the time, some offices made heels a part of their dress code. 
By then, most American women said they wore shoes with a two-inch or higher heel. But the higher the heel, the harder the fall. Anything above two inches is going to increase the risk of, of inverting your ankle, of, of tripping, falling. Injuries from high heels nearly doubled over the next decade. And then came another revolution thanks to designers like Phoebe Philo. But this time, it was heels that were under the guillotine while sneakers were hitting the runway. It was a rebellious moment that was about to change the fashion industry. About six or seven years ago, we started to track the decline of the fashion category as the athleisure category started to increase. 64 pairs of sneakers stole the show on the Chanel runway in 2014. It was a small step for Chanel, but a giant leap for fashion. Designer sneakers have become kind of, you know, the ultimate status item, the way that the designer bags were a number of years ago. Now, I think every designer that you can think of being high-end from like Chanel Valentino has a sneaker in their collection because how can you not, right? And when they hit the shelves, it was a sensation. We could not keep up with demand. It was like the minute that it arrived, it got, you know, sold out. Finally, trendy sneakers came in a size that fit most women. One of the principal ways that women were kept out of sneaker culture was that the most desirable shoes were only made in men's sizes. There was now a trend doctors could get behind. It's actually become almost rare for me to see women coming in wearing heels. In an ideal perfect world, you would use you know, sneakers as much as possible. Slippers and sandals like Birkenstocks also had a moment. These trends quickly went from the streets to the office and to the red carpet. There's been uh, societal changes that have been happening for a long time, that it's no longer necessary for a woman to wear a uniform to the office, which you know used to include heels. Sales of high heels dropped in 2017, while sneaker sales rose. And in 2018, Americans said they preferred comfortable shoes over fancy ones. Designers heard them. Louboutin launched women's sneakers in 2019, and then came COVID. And in 2020, the athleisure category exceeded the fashion category to become the number one category in footwear. We expected that to happen even before the pandemic, and the pandemic just actually accelerated it. Many Americans had nowhere to go, and sales of all footwear declined, especially for dress shoes. Searches for stilettos dropped 12% in 2020, while searches for slippers rose by more than 240% at the end of the year. But with COVID restrictions lifting, some women are ready to throw their slippers away. Searches for high heels on the shopping platform list rose by more than 170% toward the end of the year. There was this revenge shopping. So everyone who was leaving their house, they want to celebrate. The higher heels have actually recovered a little bit better because of the fact that people have events and they have places to go and they want to dress up. Manolo Blahnik is bringing back five-inch heels, something the brand hasn't done in years. Marina also got in on the act, launching her own brand, La Rude, during the pandemic. She wanted to design a heel that women could stand in all day long. It's literally like five millimeters wider. And then the other thing is, we added a memory foam for the extra comfort. There's just like so much more technology now. That's why we're able, you know, to achieve a shoe that you can spend like nine hours dancing and you're fine. One thing that has surprised Marina is the growing demand in her first year. I was expecting the business to be picking up slowly and not fast and furious as it has happened to us. This one, we cannot keep it in stock. Keeping up with the demand is the job of the factory back in her native Brazil. Here, they make about 250 pairs of La Rude shoes every day. The factory went from fulfilling orders of about 3,000 shoes to about 20,000. But heels may be going back to their roots. Men's heels are also on the rise. Jimmy Choo is now selling heels that also come in larger sizes, and Louboutin is selling genderless boots, an echo of the Persian soldiers from centuries ago. 